Hello, uh, in this video we will look at arrays uh, as a data structure. Um, my goal is to do three things. First, I will cover arrays in assembly. In assembly. And uh, I'll do this by bringing in what you already know uh, uh, about how arrays are declared and accessed and relate it to uh, see how arrays are declared, accessed, and how they're stored in memory, and that stuff, that sort of stuff. The second thing I'm going to do is uh, talk about uh, two different ways, two ways to access memory, two array access mm -hmm. mechanisms. Um, mechanisms. So uh, one is uh, is uh, index-based access. And the second thing is going to be a pointer-based access. So we we haven't introduced the word pointer yet. So I'll spend a little bit of time explaining what a pointer uh, pointer is. So we'll do two different uh, access mechanisms. The third thing um, is not so much a separate thing I'm doing. I'm going to tie all of these within a within a uh, within an example of functional debugging. Um, you will find another video in which uh, John will explain what functional debugging is. Um, what we're going to do here is we we're going to use uh, we're going to use arrays as an instrument, array arrays um, array as an as a debugging instrument. Um, in other words, I will I will collect data in a, in an array that will tell me whether uh, whether whether the code or whatever my project is um, is doing what it's intended to do that is is it fulfilling the requirements of my project right as a debugging instrument so let's um, let's recap a couple of things that we already did and uh, from there we'll we'll build uh, so what I'm gonna do again um, just to kind of give you an idea all of these will be done. There are two projects uh, that I will be uh, that that will be posted are posted on uh, posted on the class website. Um, there, one is in assembly and the other is in C. And I will be referring to these projects. And I would encourage you after you watch this video to open those projects and play around with them. Um, ask yourself what if questions. Declare your own arrays in there. Um, uh, whether it's assembly or C, and see for yourself uh, whether what you think it happens uh, really does happen or not. Okay, so play around with those two projects. Um, they will be on available to you on uh, the class website. So um, let's let's begin by a quick recap of what an array is. Uh, here's a definition of what to me what an array is. An array is a is a collection uh, actually I'm gonna be more precise than that it's an ordered collection of elements of the same data type. So there's a few things here. So let's highlight a few things of importance. First thing, I'm calling it an ordered collection. Um, the second thing I'm calling is there are elements and they all have to be of the same uh, data type. Um, and what is more, it's an it's not just any uh, it's it's a collection so there are going to be multiple elements so it's not one element but there are many elements so these are the b three basic things so the way um, the way John um, likes to think about it and I I I I would urge you to learn these terms because they are pretty common is think of an array as a sequence of locations where each location it has the same number of same number of bits. So we call this the precision. That is, if we have, let's say, four, el five elements, one, two, three, one, two, three, 
4 and 5. They're 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So by precision, what we are saying is how much space does each element take? Now we can write it this way if you think of each element being held like that or we can think of precision as how, as how many bytes each location each element is so there are, in this example there are five elements and each element is holding is is stored um, is taking up the same amount of space so this is this is our precision this is this is entirely determined this word precision here is telling us what the size is um, so the data type dictates precision and precision for us uh, let's call that n and it is it for example let's say the data type happens to be a character then n equals one if let's say it's an integer if the data type is an integer then we know that our integers can be of 8-bit integers they can be um, they can be 16-bit uh, integers or they can be um, 32-bit integers. We've already talked about these. So in, in each of these cases, the precision here, n is 1, n is 2, because its precision is in bytes. So, and this is n equals 4, precision is in bytes. So that is our, that is in a sense what the data type will dictate to us. Data type dictates n, and n can be 1, in the case of character, n is 1 or 2, or three or f sorry four depending upon whether i have a uint 8 a uint 16 uh int uh, 32 uh, whether it's unsigned or signed doesn't really matter they still take the same amount of space so the second uh part here is that it's an ordered collection and the word ordered simply is saying that we will refer to these items as being indexed from zero to whatever are uh, size minus one is so size is the size of the collection so size here is a size of our collection how many size or length uh, sometimes we call it the length of the array or uh, sometimes we call it size so in this particular example the size happens to be five because there are five elements so there's, there's the first element the second element the third element fourth element and fifth element but we refer to them by the indexes so the index starts this is what we call as zero origin which means that our index starts from zero and goes all the way to size minus one so this is the zeroth element this is the zeroth element and we call it like that we put an index this is the first element not first second and third and we go all the way to n minus 1. In this case, n, sorry, size minus 1. The size is 5. So we go up to size minus 1, which is 4 elements. So this is the basic idea of an array. Now, because the array is stored somewhere in memory, um, there will be an address associated with. So because, uh, because all things that are stored in memory have to have a precise address, we will say that the address of this is, let's say, some location 0x. 2000 let's say 0050 let's say i'm just making this up so that's where in memory it will be stored so that's a precise definition of array um, uh, with all the terms that is a zero origin it has uh, size elements that's the length of the array and it has a precision that tells you that is dictated by the data type for now, we will focus on just simple data types like character and integers. Later, we will actually think about a, a user-defined data type at which point our array can be of any arbitrary size. The key thing is that they all have to be of the same data type, which means they all have to be of the same length. Now, why do they have to be of the same length? Now, the reason why they have to be of the same length is because when you then let's take a, another, uh, let's change this slightly here. So an arbitrary array, let's call this some array ARR. And this arbitrary array, it is, if it, let's say, has has size elements, this is going to be the size minus one element. This is a zeroth element. And this is the one element. I don't care what the precision is. So this is my precision, which is we're calling n. So each of those is n bytes. 
So to get to the ith element, somewhere here, let's say there's an ith element. So how do I refer to the address of the ith element? The address of the ith element. And let's make sure we know what the range of i is, where i can be between 0 and size minus 1, where i can be in that range, inclusive of those two edges where I can be anywhere. So what is the address of the ith element? The address of the ith element is given by whatever the base is. This is the base of the array. This is the base of the array. The address of the base plus base of the array plus n times i. So if n happens to be, if it's an, if it's an, n, n is a, uh, if, uh, if n is equal to one, they're integers. If they're uh, integers, eight bit integers. If n equals two, it means that they are uh, sixteen bit integers, and so on. So this is our formula for the nth ith, ele ith elements address. Right. Um, we'll take us a couple of examples to make this clear. So now I'm going to shift and. Uh, and do some declarations. How do we declare an array? We know, uh, at least um, from, from what you did in lab two, we know how to declare arrays, declaration of arrays. Uh, declaration uh, is, it begs the question whether we want to declare, uh, declare an array in uh, RAM or in ROM. And in C, it's pretty straightforward. In in C, all you do in C, right? In C, uh, the the keyword is to use the word const. Const is the keyword that tells you whether you're putting it in ROM or in RAM. That's pretty much all we all we need to know. So, but how does it relate to in assembly? In assembly, in assembly, we want to know a few things. First thing. The, the the location where you put is entirely determined by the area statement. The area statement tells us. If the area is code, then it goes in ROM. If the area statements is a data, then it goes in RAM. That's the, that's the key, right? So let's take some examples to make this clear. So here's my project and I'm gonna declare uh, I'm going to show you both C and assembly juxtaposed. So let's declare, uh, uh, let's take the easy easy path first. Let's do some uh, declaration of arrays uh, in RAM. So here is, here is a couple of declarations of arrays in RAM. So I'm going to copy this guy from here. There are two variables I'm declaring, two, uh, two arrays I'm declaring. And I'm going to copy this from here and um, let's let's look at RAM declaration. So this is RAM declaration. We'll start with RAM because that's the easy one. So these are two declarations and you will notice uh, what I did here is I declared an array. So this is the name of the array. This is the name of the array. This is the length of the array. And that's the data type of the array. So what I did in the first case then is I declared an array of size 20 elements where there are 20 elements now. So this is the 19th, this is the 0th element and this is the 19th element, right? And this array is going to be stored in memory and the label for this is going to be, it's called pf3buff and I'll tell you why I'm calling that pf3buff in just a second. And each of these is going to be exactly of one byte. So each of these is one byte long, right? So that's one. Now we have another array here. This is an array called times and times array is going to be, a times array is going to be again an array of 20 elements, just like before, because the size here happens to be 20. I, I, I have a hash define up here, which, I, which I'm, I'm, I'm glossing over. Size has been defined as 20. Um, there was a hash define in the code. You will see that in, in the comments up here. There is this hash define of size of 20. So that's what caused the size to be 20. So now I have times, and this is the zeroth element of my this is the zeroth element of my times array, the one element of my times array, but now the precision is 
two bytes because because my array is of of 16 bits so the precision is two and this is also two and so on and now this here is going to be the 19th location so if i want to get to some ith location let's say i want to get to the 10th element in my array the 10th element in each of these arrays if i want to get to the 10th element what we are saying is to get to the 10th element we will have to apply the the simple simple uh, formula which says start with the base and in this particular case i want to go all the way till here to get to this location so all i have to do is take p3 buff and add one times because n is equal to one one times ten i'll get there right whereas if i if i do the same thing in this particular case if i want to get to the 10th element i start here but each time i walk down i'm actually taking two steps because that's a two so this will be two times i whereas this will be in this case it will be simply a one times i right so one times i where i is equal to 10 if i is equal to 10 so if where i is equal to 10 uh, where is that i equals 10 so let's see what this looks like in assembly uh, because we we've, we've already seen this in c uh, earlier so let's let's see what this declaration these declarations look like in assembly so here's our assembly project that is declaring exactly the same two arrays um, but now i'm going to make sure that i i put the stuff in the right area right so here is an here is an equivalent in assembly so here's our declaration in assembly yeah, let's blow it up a little bit so there's our e e equation and remember the key key word is that it has to be in the data this tells you that it's going to be in the ram and everything else is identical which is we say p3 buff takes up space size so this will get p3 buff assigned an array of of exactly one element one precision of one again and this is our p3 buff and that will be our zeroth element all the way up to the 19th element and notice that in when we do it in assembly for the times buffer for the times buffer because in assembly there is the data types are not really mentioned it is just space we allocate we are actually allocating two times so this two here is saying that this two here is uh, it relates to for us it relates to the precision of or in our case the data type because we are we are uh, allocating two bytes because um, in this times array is going to store um, a 16 bit number whereas the pf P, pf3 buff is going to store an 8 bit number right so that's what the reasons were now what exactly are we going to store in these that is that 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 has to do with the project uh, the purpose of the project so what we'll what we'll do in this project um, th the project which i'm demoing is i'm going to take a snapshot of port f pin 3 so pf3 pf3 for us is going to hold pf3 is uh, is the green led on our led on our uh, on our microcontroller our tm4c so what we'll do is we will change the state of it we'll actually toggle it we'll turn it will it'll be off to start with then we'll turn it on we'll turn it on turn it off so it when you look at it in in time uh, it'll it'll do this it'll be off for some time it'll be on for some time off again on again so it'll just flash so what we're going to do is at every state change every time there's a state change so there is a state change so this is the initial state there's a state change here uh, there's another state change here every time there's a state change we will dump the state of pf3 into this array so initially it'll be zero next it'll be um, because it's it, it's been flipped so remember port f port f where pin 3 is this is 0 1 2 3 so this is the bit we are interested in but what we will do is we will dump all of port f so we will dump uh, 
value which is going to be uh, so this will be 0 x 0 0 then it'll be 0 x uh, 0 8 because if, it'll, if it's on that will be a 1 0 0 0 then it'll go from a 1 to again a 0 and so on so then the next location should be a 0 x 0 0 and so on and we will only dump 20 values in this array now the idea though I'm not going to be using this array this times array the purpose of this times array was what if I could not only dump the the value of the of the uh, st uh, of the port f state but also if I could actually find a timing value then I could also dump the t value so this is the state this is up here is the state this is the y axis if you will is the state which goes 0 1 and if the x axis were time then i could dump the timing value so i could be dumping whatever these uh, actual values are this is my initial value then the next time i dump i'll dump that value there and the next time i dump i'll dump that value and i'll dump 10 uh, 20 values like that so that was the idea but I'm not going to do that in this in this project I'm just showing you the need for a different data type a array of a different data type now these are two examples we could have an array of uh, of 32 bits or 18 I mean array of items which are 6 uh, 8 bits 16 bits or 32 bits depending upon which what size integer we are storing so now let's take a look at how do we get our stuff into ROM. So what is it that makes stuff go in ROM? And we said that the declarations in C are straightforward. We just have to put the word on, on this. We simply have to put the word const in front. So here's actually, let me grab these guys here. Um, here, uh, oops, escape. So I'll actually put this guy const back here. So here is here are some declarations of things that go in the ROM. And this is the C declarations and I'll put them side by side now so we don't have to worry about uh, repeating these in two different projects. So here is the assembly equivalent of that. So I will only copy what is relevant to me. Um, so again, this is the area statement which says code and this is my declaration so these are these two things are equivalent so um, the area statement the keyword here is the area statement that tells us that we're going to be in ROM and that's a read only and we have our prime primes which is this guy I should, I think I re renamed name them wrong so there's a primes array there's a pick four array there's a greet array and a vowels array now you will notice that that um, when I declare them I use these words which are dcw so dc dc e w is a w for us is 32 bits or is 16 bits I'm sorry uh, dc d is 32 bits and DCB is 8 bits. Um, so those are our 8 bit, uh, these are our 8 bits which are greet and vowels are 8 bits and DCD which is pick 4 are the 4 different numbers I picked and they happen to be, um, they happen to be uh, uh, are 32 bits and these primes are are 16 bits each now don't worry about the align statement we will find out we'll learn about that later when we we see why in assembly we need to make sure pointers are properly aligned um, and uh, because there are the because this is an um, this is not ending on a word boundary we had to put that align statement for now you can ignore that but the key thing I want you to notice is the the fact that um, this statement here, howdy Joe, corresponds to that statement right there. This vowel statement corresponds to that statement and um, in the prime statement corresponds to this guy and the, uh, the pick four corresponds to that one. The important thing to know about arrays um, and we, we've done this in C is how do we 
how do we know infer the size of the array how do we know the size of an array so sometimes size of an array how do we know what the size of an array is now if the array size is um, uh, array size is part of the declaration for example vowels is 5 and we put the word here now in c if i don't put anything and if i put a brackets like this if their brackets have no value in them if no brack the bracket has no no um, value inside then c infers that oh this is uh, there are how many characters are there based on that it's going to infer that the same thing is here pick four did not have it there, these two didn't have any value in them but c knows that there is in the curly braces i put the values how many how many values i i i listed will tell us that there are four values so the indexes go from zero to zero to uh, four so you, you don't have to do that in c in assembly we simply write them out one after the other and that will take care of all of these being stored for example um, primes will be an array in um, primes will be an array and the values because i said they're bcws the first one will go at the zeroth element will have the one uh, the next element will one element will have the two uh, and so on and each of these because i said w each of these will be two bytes long yeah um so uh one of the th one of the uh, things that we uh, that c uh, i mean programmers have to contend with when they when they choose an array is how to terminate array an array so the termination of an array so so how are arrays array array size and how it relates to termination do we have to terminate an array right so we call that in 306 we call them sentinels do we need a sentinel well if an array can can have the size of the array can be uh, explicit it can be implicit or it can be inferred by inference is through a sentinel right so explicit means that i actually put the declaration explicit is when i when i declare the array i would have declared an array of let's say some scores and i declared the array to be of size some five so there's no uh, and maybe i even called um, the this of size length and the length has been hash defined so this is explicit i know exactly what the length of this array is let's say there are 50 students in a class and i do that right um, so that's an array which whose definition explicitly tells us what it is um, the implicit was uh, is typically only applicable when we when we uh, define some buffer if you will uh, or as let's say I define something called a filter and the filter um, is is has has some coefficients and I write the coefficients out and and uh, the number of coefficients of right minus uh, 0 point uh, let's say minus 1 uh, plus 2 3 and minus uh, two let's say those are four uh, elements that make up my filter so they it is um, it is implicit because uh, because i didn't have to spell it out you can do you can see what happened the inferred one is a, is when there's a sentinel so you will notice in my declaration of um, of the greet um, i did something like this in greet i um, i said greet uh, it has a dcb and i i put the put the um, put the word uh, howdy i put the thing howdy joe and then i put a zero after so this is an explicit term sentinel this is explicit so i am sorry yeah, this is a sentinel like put but if you s navigate through this array you can find out there's a zero there now a quick note on this um, a quick important note um, in lc3 uh, strings when you do a strings dot strings in lc3 uh, dot strings uh, will will uh, will insert a null 
um, null uh, null for you. Well, in in uh, in the in the ARM assembly, uh, when I put quotation marks like that, the quotes do not uh, do not uh, have an a null in them. So do not do not null terminate for you. So you have to explicitly put that zero there. 